Hey everyone, welcome back to the Apex Gun Parts channel. Today we've got another kit unboxing video, or unbagging video for you today, of an extremely rare kit we got in at the time of this video, the HK61, otherwise known as the M61. It's a G3, an early G3, a pre-G3. So let's go back to BC and check out this, I can't think of any other rhyme. Let's check out this kit. Alrighty, so for you today, we've got a, another kit unboxing video. We've got a pre-G3 parts kit. This is the M61 as designated by the Portuguese military. The M61 precedes the official adaptation of the G3 by the Bundeswehr, or however you say that. So very, very cool kit, very early G3 kit. If you are into roller lock guns, if you are a big HK guy, You've got to have one of these. They're really rare. <laughs> They're very rare. We've only got a very limited amount of these and uh, we're never going to see these again. That's plain and simple. I'm not trying to, you know, smoke your salmon or anything, but like we're not going to have these again. So we're going to go out and open up this parts kit, show you what's inside, show you all the features of this early M61 pre G3 and show you why they're interesting. And we'll talk a little bit about the development of the G3 while we're at it, because we've just been overwhelmed with G3 stuff. All right, so a little background. During the 1950s, late 1950s and early 1960s, the German military, the Western military was kind of rearming and trying to figure out how they're gonna do this whole thing after they were doing naughty stuff in Europe during World War II. Uh, so they're trying to figure out what their service rifle is going to be. Now, during this time, they had introduced the FAL to their border troops and were slowly introducing the FAL to the Bundeswehr. And they contacted the Belgians and they said, hey, can we make this gun in our own country? And they were like, no, you've done some bad stuff. We don't trust you. And so they decided to go somewhere else. And so that leads them into the set me and then later the adoption of the G3. Well, they took the set me and made some changes to it and then later adopted the G3. And these kits are in that kind of development period before a mass adaptation of the G3. So the M61 as designated by Portugal shows that transitionary period. So the M61, the pre G3 has a lot of features that are similar to the Thal and similar to the set me and similar to the G3. So very cool gun, very, very few made. And it's because they weren't officially you know, regularly issued. And what we assume is when the Portuguese were using these, especially during some of the colonial wars in Africa, they were giving a lot of feedback to H and K. And then they made some changes that you see later on. So let's take a look at this awesome parts kit. Really, really cool piece of history in military small arms development. Alrighty, so first thing first, just like the very early G3s that are officially adopted, we've got a wood butt stock. Later on, obviously, they switched to that green polymer, but the first G3s had wood butt stocks. This has a wood butt stock. So very similar to the official adoption of the G3. You can see the sling mount here. And then we've got numbers over here and that recoil spring built in. And moving forward, we have the fire control group housing. Extremely similar, as you'll see in the official G3. The trigger guard shape is actually a little bit different, and that's specific to these M61s, but otherwise pretty much the same as you might see on a regular G3. So pretty straightforward. Now the bolts and carriers on these, we've gone through these extensively because we are gonna have different tiers of these parts kits while they're available. Once, like I said, once they're not available, they're gone. Um, but we have different tiers of these because we want to make sure that for the collector, they have all the right parts. And one thing we're checking for is on these kits, they are 1961 dated. So that's really important because they're the model 61, 1961. So, but the bolt and carrier still you know, the same as the G3. So this didn't really change throughout its development, but they are marked and they do have numbers on the bottom showing that they are matched to the rest of the gun. We've got the small parts bin. Now there are some interesting parts in here that are vastly different from the widely adopted G3. First of all, we got the small parts with also the bipod clamp assembly. I'll show you the bipod in a minute. Very cool. Um, since we're going kind of back to front here, We'll check out this receiver stub because it has the rear sight and you'll notice it's not a rotating drum. It's a flip sight like those early set me models and the set me B. So for whatever reason, they decided that the rotating drum was better. Uh, they were right. Uh, but these early ones do have the flip sights, which is very interesting. And on the left side of the gun here, actually, you can see some of those German proof marks from H and K. Now we've got the front tri post assembly. Now, if you look at it from the front, what's interesting is you're going, wow, they damaged the hole here. It's all squished. No, 
Uh, that's actually how they designed these M61s. They have more of a oval shape to them. Uh, it's kind of reminiscent of the STG44, but uh, this is exactly how they manufacture them. They're kind of more oval shaped. And then additionally, we have the muzzle brake. Yeah, that's not a birdcage, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> uh, here's the early, early M61 G3 muzzle brake. Now, eventually they switched to the birdcage flash rider style thing because everyone's doing that. But before, when they were all cool and unique, they used this muzzle brake. Uh, we only have a certain amount of kits that came with these muzzle brakes because these saw use in colonial Africa. As you can imagine, Africa makes you have to repair guns and change things. So a lot of them will have different types of flash hiders, but we do have a select grade of kits that have these original muzzle brakes. These are very hard to come by and these are with the these were what were issued with the M61. So very cool piece there, shows the uniqueness of the M61. Uh, here we've got the early style caulking tube, more of those German Eagles on the left side here, a one piece caulking tube assembly. Um, you'll notice that the weldments and stuff are different on this than a standard issue G3. So this is the tin metal front hand guard. So no plastic, no wood. And this was issued with these M61. So I can kind of give you some reference here of what the front end would look like. Now, if you're like me, you're going, hey, that's kind of similar to the G1 FAL, which I think is what they were going for because the German army really liked the FAL. And so we've got these front tin hand guards that have slots cut in them for the built-in bipod assembly. So this front end is very reminiscent of the G1 FAL. Obviously they really liked it, so they just moved that design idea over into the M61. Obviously, they probably got some feedback and you know maybe it was budget things who knows that they decided hey this whole assembly really isn't necessary let's just throw a wood handguard on there and move on with our lives but these were originally issued with this integrated bipod handguard assembly kind of makes the look of the whole gun very very cool and it shows the development history of them you know transitioning from Thal to G3. Additionally, in the small parts bag, we have the clamp assembly and the clamp assembly goes over the barrel um, and that just helps keep the bipod in place. So pretty cool little piece of design work that they did in these M61s. So that is the M61 parts kit. Like I said, this is definitely one of the most rare kits we've ever seen here. Um, we had to do a video on it because, you know, We've done other videos on rare kits in the past, like those East German 74s we had a few years back. Just as rare, these guys. Um, you know, if the rarest and most collectible gun on the east side of the wall is the East German AK-74, on the west side, it's one of these. So if you are a big German military small arms collector and maybe you've got an East German AK-74 and you want the rare equivalent of that, it's the M61. Like, I can't express how rare these guys are. So guys, if you would like more information on these, jump on our website as quickly as you can. I don't know how long they're gonna be up and available. Uh, so make sure you go check those out. Now, if you're not interested in one of the rare collectible ones, but you still would like a G3, we got those too. <laughs> We've got G3 kits at really good prices. And at the time of this video, we actually have original FMP Portuguese military barrels available. We only have a limited number left at the time of this video. So G3 kit, original barrel, you know, 300 something dollars for a G3 kit. You can't really beat that. And then make sure you check out our M61s as well. Thanks so much for tuning in and watching. Let us know down in the comments what you think of post-World War II German small arms development and what you think they should have stuck with. Should they have gone with the foul or do you like the G3? Uh, thanks for watching. We'll catch you in the next one. Should this light be on? Hey, bro. Don't. Shh. I'm. I'm a star. Shut the up.